This is the Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, Express Version, day 153. Crazy Love Francis Chan's mother died giving birth to him. The only affection he can remember receiving from his father lasted about 30 seconds when he was on the way to his stepmother's funeral aged nine. When he was 12, his father also died. Francis cried, but also felt relieved. Francis is now a pastor. He and his wife, Lisa, have seven children. When his children were born, his own love for his children and his desire for their love was so strong that it opened his eyes to how much God desires and loves us. He said, through this experience, I came to understand that my desire for my children is only a faint echo of God's great love for me and for every person he made. I love my kids so much it hurts. Calling his first book Crazy Love, he wrote, The idea of crazy love has to do with our relationship with God. All my life I've heard people say, God loves you. It's probably the most insane statement you could make to say that the eternal creator of this universe is in love with me. There is a response that ought to take place in believers, a crazy reaction to that love. Do you really understand what God has done for you? If so, why is your response so lukewarm? The word zeal implies an intense or passionate desire. It can be misdirected, but as Paul writes, it is right to be zealous, provided that the purpose is good. Elsewhere, he says, never be lacking in zeal. Perhaps a good modern translation of the word zeal is crazy love. From Psalm 69. Zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. Crazy love for God's house. David loves God so much that it feels like anyone insulting God is insulting him. It's painful to hear people blaspheming God. The insults of those that insult you fall on me. David writes, Zeal for your house consumes me. He was so passionate about God's house because that was the symbolic place of God's presence with his people. The message explains the zeal he expresses in these verses. Because I'm madly in love with you. These words are applied by the disciples to Jesus when he cleanses the temple. Out of zeal for God's house, Jesus drove off those who were trying to profit from a place of worship, taking advantage of those who wanted to draw near to God. David is passionate about not bringing God's name into disrepute. He does not want anyone to be disgraced because of him. Don't let those who look to you in hope be discouraged by what happens to me. He knows his folly and guilt, as I know mine. God, you know every sin I've committed. My life's a wide open book before you. David is concerned that this should not bring dishonor to God's house. Today, God's house, the temple, is Christ and his body, his church. There's nothing wrong with being passionate about the church. Be zealous to see God's name honored in his church today. Personally, I am inspired when I see a zeal for God's house, a passion in worship, a leaning in to the talks, an amazing welcome for every new person. Passion is inspiring and infectious. We need more crazy love in the church today. Lord, consume me with zeal for your name and your church. New Testament Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he'd taken it off, and jumped into the water. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them 
and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. Crazy love for Jesus. This is the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples, his fourth, including Mary Magdalene. Jesus appeared in the ordinariness of simple daily life. You do not necessarily need to do extraordinary things. Jesus meets you wherever you are. Peter is fishing. Six of the disciples join him. Jesus tells them where to catch fish and then cooks breakfast for them. Here is Jesus, risen from the dead, the one through whom the whole universe came into being saying to his friends, come and have breakfast. The God who is revealed in Jesus Christ is life-affirming and such fun. When John recognized Jesus, he exclaimed to Peter, it's the Lord. Peter is so filled with excitement, enthusiasm and zeal to get to Jesus as quick as he can that he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. Sometimes in our enthusiasm and zeal, we may do some rather crazy things, but what matters is a heart of love and zeal for Jesus. Peter's eyes were riveted on Jesus. All he wanted was to be with Jesus. In Jesus' conversation with Peter after breakfast, we see what it means to have this passionate love for Jesus. First, supreme love. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? These may refer to the fishing gear or the other disciples, whatever it means. Jesus was calling him to make his love for Jesus his supreme love. Our love for Jesus should be more than our love for anything else. Peter's zeal had not been without its obstacles. He denied Jesus three times. So Jesus gives him the opportunity to affirm his love three times. Three times, Peter tells Jesus, I love you. Second, sacrificial love. Jesus hints to Peter that his love and zeal for Jesus and his church, is going to be costly. Indeed, it would cost Peter his life. Jesus said to him, When you're old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. This is the earliest evidence for the martyrdom of Peter by crucifixion. To be a follower of Jesus is a dangerous undertaking. When Peter is told this, he turns, sees John, and asks about his future. In this intimate moment with Jesus, Peter is distracted by comparison with John. Jesus politely tells him to mind his own business, something worth remembering when we are tempted to compare ourselves with others. Third, servant love. Each time Peter tells Jesus, I love you, Jesus tells Peter, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Peter can only guide, nourish and be responsible for people if he loves Jesus passionately. Then Jesus says to Peter very simply, follow me. This crazy love for Jesus means following his example of love. Jesus showed the supreme example of servant love. He said greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. He gave a very practical example of what this kind of servant love involved 
when he washed the disciples' feet. It's a commitment to help people, whatever we feel about them, to grow in their love for Jesus, not seeking to control them, but to liberate them. Jesus calls you to the same kind of love. Express your passionate love for Jesus by a passionate love for other people, giving yourself to take care of his sheep. Peter was willing to make Jesus the supreme love of his life. He was willing to pay the price and to follow in his footsteps of servant love. He loved the one who did so many things in his brief life on earth that if every one of them were written down, the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Lord, help me to love you as Peter did, to be zealous for you. Help me to feed your lambs, take care of your sheep, and be willing to pay the price, whatever it is, to follow you to the end. Old Testament from 2 Samuel 2 and 3 Abner called out to Joab, Must the sword devour forever? Don't you realize this will end in bitterness? Crazy love for unity With the death of Saul, Israel and Judah were divided. Abner called out to Joab, Are we going to keep killing each other till doomsday? Don't you know that nothing but bitterness will come from this? This cry has a very modern ring as we see the continued turbulence and division in the Middle East. The war lasted a long time. Then Abner sent messengers on his behalf to say to David, Whose land is it? Again, this is a question still asked today. Abner went on to say, Make an agreement with me and I will help you bring all Israel over to you. Eventually this happened. And for a time at least, the land enjoyed unity. Disunity is so destructive. We see it in the Middle East today. We see it in the church today. We should be passionate for unity. Lord, I pray for a peaceful and just solution in the Middle East. Help me also to be passionate in pursuing peace, unity and reconciliation in your church. Pepper adds, 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 14 says, then David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, son of Saul, demanding, Give me my wife, Michal, whom I betrothed to myself for the price of a hundred Philistine foreskins. So Ishbosheth gave orders to have her taken away from her husband, Paltiel, son of Laish. Her husband, however, went behind her, weeping behind her all the way to Baharim. Then Abner said to him, Go home. So he went back. I know Michal was legally betrothed to David, but I'm not sure this was the best pastoral decision. Her poor husband, Paltiel, seemed really upset. Michal wasn't consulted, and David hardly needed any more wives. He already had at least six. I think she would have been much happier if she'd been left with Paltiel. Verse 15 